What if I told you that without even knowing it, you might be literally creating your own objections or literally planting a seed of doubt or questioning in the mind of your prospects as you're at the door that's giving them the rejection, the path to rejecting you at the door. That's what's at stake when you pitch the wrong way. And in this video, I'm gonna revisit the SLAP formula to teach you tactics to let the homeowner literally guide you on how to pitch them so you don't unknowingly give them the objections and an easy path to boot your butt right off their doorstep. Hey, my name's Adam, the roof strategist, and I help salespeople like you and sales teams reach peak performance, have fun doing it, but most importantly, to help you smash your income goals. So let's jump right in to today's video. If you're new here and you haven't yet watched my slap canvassing formula, I recommend you do so. All right, it covers a framework of how to pitch at the door. And I get questions, Adam, why do you use an open-ended question versus a close-ended question? Let's go into those differences right now and then you're gonna see how all this comes together and why you are likely failing at the door by giving the homeowner the objection. You're handing the objection to them on a silver platter saying, hey, save this to me. Or here's an easy way for you to kick me off your doorstep and say no. There's a lot at stake and not anymore when you're done with this video. All right, so slap, S-L-A-P. Say hi and break the ice. L, I should just be using normal fingers. Say hi, break the ice, L. Let them know why, why you are at their doorstep and make it as familiar as possible. That's referencing things in the neighborhood. A, ask an open-ended question, which I'll talk about in a second, and P, present to their answer. It is stupid simple, and that's why you don't need word-for-word -word scripts. Yes, I do provide a few, and they are included in the marketing battle pack. There's a link in this description. Uh, if you're on mobile, it's a little triangle. And that's why I also provide a printout for the SLAP formula. So you can literally print it out, put it in your truck and have this quick reference. But I will tell you the SLAP formula is the number one thing that people reach out. This has changed everything for them because it's allowed them to get out of their own head and shorten, this is a common thing, it allowed me to shorten my pitch at the door and start easier conversations. Okay, and there's a reason for that, which I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, now we're gonna, before we go into that, I wanna talk about the difference between open-ended question versus closed-ended question. Did you eat breakfast today? Okay, what did you just do? When I asked you that, you started thinking, did I eat breakfast? And you know what that answer is? Yes or no, okay? Now, easy. You know the answer right away. And I just guided you to a yes or no. Which by the way, you only wanna answer questions that are gonna to get to yes with very rare exception. But for some reason, all these door-to-door -door salespeople are training you to ask questions that lead to a no out of the gate. So you can be like, well, I'm glad I'm here. And it's pushy and it's garbage. And it's getting the homeowner to say no, which is the opposite of what you want them to do. Okay, what if I ask you this? What do you have for breakfast this morning? Now you're thinking. You're having to think what you ate. And then you're gonna share it. And it's gonna start a conversation. Now that's a very rudimentary example. Now let's look at this in storm damage. Have you had someone come out and take a look at your roof yet? No, we're good, thanks. Boom, door closed. All right? Or no, we haven't. Or better yet, what if they said yes? Yeah, our insurance was out, we're good. Yeah, I had three roofers look at it already. You're literally creating by answering, asking that close-ended question and defined close-ended. Close-ended is a yes or a no, okay? You're giving yourself a rejection. You're telling the homeowner to reject you out of the gate. This is why I preach an open-ended question which requires them put on their thinking cap, think about an answer, but guess what? When done right, when done right, the open-ended question invites the prospect to tell you what's wrong, to tell you the problem. Because guess what sales are? It's identifying a problem and inserting yourself as the solution. So when you ask an open-ended question, I'll give you a few of them right now. I wanted to stop by and ask, how has the insurance process been for you as you point and look up at the roof? Okay, how has it been? That's good, bad, great, not so great. This is where we're at, okay? They're gonna be required to think a little and it's not a yes or no. They can't kick you off with, it's good, it's bad, it's great. We're okay, like they won't kick you off that way. All right, then here's another one. So I, I just finished up with Peggy next door and um, just helped meet with her adjuster. We got the roof approved. And while I'm in the neighborhood and have my roof, excuse me, have my ladder uh, with me, I just wanted to stop by and ask, where in the insurance process are you? Where are you? Again, you are not being forceful and you're not inserting yourself. And I've watched videos, I see trainers on, uh, like tre preaching these, these things that just make no sense to me. And you, if you ask, where are you in the process, you're giving them a way to think, to tell you the problem, which is gonna be one of the four stages of the claims process. 
What are you talking about? What insurance process? Oh, great, I'm glad I stopped by. Her roof was totaled. Yours might be too, right? Oh, you know what? Um, we're in the point where the insurance came out and they, they're only paying for a couple repairs. Maybe the homeowner's satisfied with that. Maybe they're not. But now you know the problem, okay? Or, hey, they denied me. And I'm really pissed off because I know they got a new roof and they got a new roof. Or better yet, you know, we're at the point where we're just picking a roof. Our insurance came out, they paid for the roof, we got to check and get estimates. Guess what you just did by asking that? You, you invited them to tell you the problem they're having, which gives you the easy way to pee for a slap, present to their answer, provide the solution to what they just told you. You're giving yourself the keys to pitch. And then you say, hey, I'm so glad I stopped by. Here's how I might be able to help you out. And you just fast track it. You cut through all the noise in the BS to let them guide you. So key takeaways right here. And by the way, if you are interested in the battle pack or your complete sales strategy, new program coming September 10th, there's links in the description. Again, that little triangle if you're on mobile. When you show up at the door, slap. This goes for hail or wind, okay? Say hi, break the ice. Hey, my name's Adam. Uh, by the way, absolutely beautiful boat in the driveway. Just break, mention something about the house. I love what you've done with the house. Those garage doors are super, super cool. Beautiful vegetable garden. Nice F-150, nice Raptor out there. Oh, I see you're an Eagles fan, awesome. Yeah, I've been, you see the game Sunday? Whatever it is, find something unique about their house to break the ice. Compliments are the best way to break the ice. I had a fan of the channel send me an email asking for advice on how to protect a garden for an install. And I looked at the thing, I was like, that is stunning. And that is exactly what I'd lead with. Beautiful vegetable garden. Wow, that's, that's something, or flower garden, whatever it is. Okay, so say hi, break the ice. Compliments are great. I'll let them know why you're there. Hey, the reason I'm stopping by, I've been helping homeowners on uh, Lexington here um, get their roof looked at after that big storm that came through last week. So again, see how I noticed I dropped the name of the street. And then people say, Adam, well, I haven't signed anyone up yet. It doesn't matter. You just say, I'm serving people in this neighborhood. I'm in the, um, you know, I'm in the Aurora. The, in, the more, so think of it like this, right? <laughs> I'm here in Colorado, like that's not that local. Then I could say, hey, I'm in this, I'm in this city. I'm in Aurora. Well, Aurora is not really that close. What if I just said like, I'm in the Alcalo subdivision. Ooh, now we're getting better. Or I'm on Lexington, I'm on the street. Or what if I take it one layer even deeper and I just say, hey, I just hopped off um, Darcy's house across the street. Okay, you're making it familiar. There's your L. Let them know why you're there and make it familiar. A, ask that open-ended question. Where are you in the insurance process? How has the insurance process been for you? Those are great, two very simple open-ended questions to ask, okay? Then, let them talk and P, present their answer. So what you're doing is inviting them to, to tell you the problem in a very conversational way, okay? and then P, present to their answer. And I wanna just show you how this formula works, S-L-A-P, in terms of just on the fly, putting it together. Say hi, break the ice, my name's Adam. And uh, I'm the, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm the roof strategist at the door. You use your company name. Let them know why you're there. Hey, I just am uh, installing uh, Jill's house next week. Just wanted to stop by, leave my information, in case any debris comes in your yard. So there's working an install. Or I just helped her get her roof approved. I just met with the adjuster. Um, we're gonna be getting her work done here in the next couple weeks. Or better yet, you know, I just hopped up on Jill's roof. She had no idea that she had storm damage. She couldn't believe the pictures I showed her and I'd love to be able to take some for you. So again, making it familiar, all right? You see how this all comes together. No matter what scenario, you just plug and play and you can do it on the fly. So print out that cheat sheet that's in the battle pack along with access to all the direct mail letters, the letter leave behinds, the call scripts, the samples, the referral program, the insurance agent thing, all that jazz is in there. But I'm talking the slap formula right now because you should print that out and keep it in your vehicle. It is a gold mine to help you out. Hopefully this video helps you ace that pitch at the door. Now, there are a ton of videos in a playlist that I'm gonna link right here at the end of this video on canvassing to help you more with pitching, staying confident at the door deal with rejection but the key takeaway is this you need to ask open-ended questions because when you start doing those closed-ended questions you're literally kicking yourself in the teeth you're giving the homeowner you're basically that sheepish guy that's like here's the easy way to reject me just do it now don't make it harder for yourself make it easy go against the grain do what's different because every other roofer is doing the same garbage most of the training in this industry is like hey I'm here to do a free inspection well guess what if I have a check in hand do I need an inspection no if my insurance company told me that I had partial coverage, do you think I need an inspection right away? No. What I need you to do is tell me that I can get to where I need to be, which is getting the whole thing done, then do the inspection. But not everyone thinks they need the inspection. The inspection isn't the immediate solution to the problem. So put this slap formula to use and you will start getting past more doors than you can imagine. 
Check out this playlist to learn more, and I will see you on a future video.